This is the second time I'm watching this, but this time it reminds me of the uh, My Hero Academia movie, the highway scene. I guess at this point he senses the presence of a curse. Yeah, I know that guy's a closet, closet badass. He's not fooling anyone. Sense your presence for a long way away. On to head. Kimi. This is a great chance to show off his powers, though. This is not. This is not the villain. This is not the villain that's gonna give him trouble. I can just make those. I see. All flash, no substance. Nope. <laughs> You're a fool. You're as foolish as you look. I gotta say, I'm very excited for this fight. This is a showcase of his abilities. Didn't even bother dodging it, just ate it. Maybe they're growing or expanding. Wait, really? For real? Well, this is creating a clear frame of reference for power level. I feel like I know how it's gonna go down. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and cue intro. So I think this is the first time I've ever reflected on the lyrics of the opening. To try to sum it up, it's something like, Mankind is naturally kind of terrible. I'm not good enough or talented enough to make my own way or be a good person. I'm drowning in life. I can't imagine a future for someone like me. I try to run, but I keep falling. These wounds will never heal. <laughs> and the world waits for me to give up. It's... <laughs> An empowering message. I guess we can't all be My Hero Academia, speaking of which, but I'm gonna take a, a reach a little bit for some optimism, especially in light of what I felt about Girl's outlook, where it's sort of cynical and defeatist on its surface, but it's not without its truth, and there's still some great things they can do from that place. I think my most hopeless time ever in life was when I was sort of made aware of the fact that nothing was guaranteed in life, and the things I thought were a given and sort of destined for me and me alone were not at all the reality of life and was sort of an ignorance of the, the danger and the chaos and the fact that failure is a very real possibility. Life is way harder than I thought. You know, there's like a loss of faith. There's sort of a, a belief as kids that if you just sort of follow the rules and believe hard enough in the system that you'll get what you want. In adolescence, you sort of realize that in many ways following that course is counterproductive or has been laid in front of you by a societal incentive, not necessarily to maximize you, but to make you sort of gel with what the structure already is, which is not the worst thing. You know, there's way worse things, but that's definitely not the same as getting what you want and being fulfilled as a human being. It's a realization that I think a lot of people put off for a long time or maybe never experience where you figure out that no one is coming to help you. It's sort of on you in a very big way and always will be no matter what, no matter how much help you get. Even if people do show up to help you, there's a certain fundamental kind of help that only you can give yourself. But back to the part that's optimistic, I think if you can go far enough into that and sort of let go a little bit and not really fight it, but try to the best of your ability and range of experience to accept, there's a lot of doors that open and those doors may be more authentic than it would be if you were following sort of the path of unexamined living, if that makes sense. And that's sort of how I felt about Goro. You know, he's like, the world is just chaos and cruelty. But look, here's this little slice of the world I can affect. Well, I'm gonna make it count. So I feel like that might be a thing for more characters than just him and the show as a whole, where there's a lot of darkness in here. They're going to have to figure out who they are and what they can contribute to the darkness despite the fact that there's massive darkness. And if they do that honestly and well enough, then maybe they'll, they'll make it out alive. Episode 7, Assault. His whole thing just, it just bothers me. His whole thing is it's off, it's wrong. He compliments you as he condescends you and beats you. Real pen all along. Yeah. Not that it really did anything. His head just erupted into a volcano. I don't think that's him. Oh right, this pure emotion thing. How I'm more pure than humans because I have anger. Truth or death. Maybe there's something to the villains in that regard as well, you know? The villains represent like the harsh truth of life. <laughs> He's confused. Right. And move exposition. Jutsu exposition. This is some kind of hypnotism. <laughs> He's going with it. Yeah, may as well just see what he has to say. May as well uh, aid this exposition. An infinity barrier. Ah, uh, it's like a, what do you call it, an asymptote. Oh, but he can turn it on and off. 
<laughs> he somehow managed to turn this uh, this attack into a romantic date. You ever hear that paradox where it's like, in order to reach a point, you must first go halfway to that point. But then, of course, before you reach the halfway point, you got to go halfway before that. And before you get to that halfway, halfway point, you got to go halfway before that. So you never really arrive. You just make smaller and smaller movements infinitely towards zero, but never reaching zero. And then if you really think about it, it, it should mean that motion is impossible, which might mean that our idea of infinite is, is wrong or that it just doesn't exist. And in fact, I think mathematically, there are ways of showing that a decimal point followed by a number repeated, quote unquote, infinitely, is the same thing as the next higher number. So for example, 0.9 repeated infinitely can be treated the same as one. I don't know if that's relevant, it just came to mind. This is pure emotion. There's no lies in this pain and fear. I really hate this villain, so it's, it's kind of satisfying. Convergence and divergence. Do it on the villain so we can find out. Utter annihilation and banishment. Or it just knocks him through some trees. <laughs> Which also is satisfying, not complaining. Right behind him, too. I knew this is how this was gonna go. I knew he was gonna be overpowered. I'm not complaining. This is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> it's a good old fashioned punt kick. Into a lake. Does that extinguish his flame? Trying to warn you. What was your existence worth, Jogo? I feel like he'll be comfortable with that. Is he flying? That's a generous way of putting it. That's Lord of the Rings! Hell yeah. He's got natural aptitude. Just trains himself. That's the thing he has in common with Tanjiro. Did he, like, take this pause and do this while he was fighting the Fondu head? This is pretty amazing. That's why it took him that extra 30 seconds. I'm starting to think that even though I know he's powerful, I didn't realize how powerful he is. That was amazing. Well, you failed at step one, so... It's cute, thinking that he's, your plan still has a chance at this point. No, I'm gonna let my, uh, my little homeboy finish you off. I wanna hear more about this infinite technique. I feel like there's a lot more in there. Pure emotion. It's all relative, I guess. He's, yeah, stronger than Sukuna, apparently, which is amazing. It's not enough. Ooh, you know what? This creates a, a pretty crazy opportunity, though. Is this not luring us into some kind of safety? Gojo is being set up here so well as the older brother you can count on. He's not All Might in personality, but, like, I feel like to say Gojo is here wouldn't be too much of a stretch, you know what I mean? So then what happens when he gets taken out? That's just pure chaos and darkness. As terrible as that would be, that would be very exciting narratively. And so I sort of feel like there's a, a good chance that he is incapacitated at some point. This is to set the power really high, and also the trust and respect really high. We can lean on him, and we need someone to lean on right now because it's just insanity and chaos chaos and a cruel dark world where you just want to give up. He, he's like the one counterexample of that. So then how much of a test would it be for the characters if that is suddenly compromised? Like adding to that, he's just super loving. Yeah, he just feels like a big bro. He just feels like someone you want to lean on. He's capable and warm. Yeah, we don't, we're not interested in your stupid domain. No one wants to live in your world. This is nothing compared to the infinite. That's basically a volcano. Very on theme. <laughs> Not really a huge shock thematically for his character. Right, we've seen the environments change. And we saw Ultimate Badass Assistant sort of create his own little shield thing. Right, home field advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if we can bend the rules a little bit. Oh, ex except when they don't. Except when I'm here, I guess. This is actually a very interesting system, this whole domain thing. Opens up a lot of possibilities. Another domain. It is like a strategy game in a way. Oh man, he's taking off the blindfold. And of course, he's got beautiful eyes. Why wouldn't he? He's gorgeous. 
So why does he have the blindfold? Is it like, because things are too easy for him, usually? Or is it because this is his domain and he creates his own rules? I'm just blown away by the stunning beauty of Gojo. And, and, and also the infinite. Which is more beautiful, I'm not sure. This is amazing. This is unbelievably stunning. It was more than overwhelmed. It was just completely obliterated. I guess there's in infinite and then there's nothingness. Both at once. What happens when you combine the two? Limitless. Yeah, I believe it. That was one of the most stunning lower level henchman defeats I've ever seen. <laughs> Extremely satisfying. And he gets to witness it. And we're not done, we can still get information. You be careful though, be careful. We all know he's talented and gorgeous. You gotta develop your own thing because he won't always be around. I'm getting scared now. Now I have something to lose. No, but I will make this flower. Nah, he asked for this. He asked for this smackdown himself. Speaking of infinite, these eyes. Am I wrong in thinking that they're growing? They're growing, right? Oh, he actually showed up. And flowers. Kidnap him. No, I wanted to die. Okay. Well, Mob would have gotten in the tree's psyche, but now Gojo, he just torches it. I don't think that's possible. Yeah. Speaking of Infinite again, I feel like there's a lot more to his character than I think, or thought. I'm trying to think what the thematic connection is between his moveset and his general demeanor and outlook. And to throw out an idea, I have a feeling that the broader perspective you take, or the more you can see, or the more ideas or possibilities you can believe in at once sort of hold simultaneously, the harder it is to let minor anxieties or day-to-day -day problems run away on you, or run away with you. I don't get the sense that he's unafraid. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he sees the danger more than anyone else does. It's just that the danger is not what other people might see right in front of them. It might be way bigger. And in that sense, he himself might even realize his own limitations. Hence why there'd be such a strong reason, even if his methodology is patient, to develop these kids into what they need to be. If he's really at the level that it seems like he is, in terms of his perception of the world and infinite possibilities, in the scope of what matters and what is dangerous, Chi's head isn't, isn't it. How much does he know exactly, I wonder? It's definitely more than I thought at first. It's not just talent. This is way more than just, you know, cursed talent. <laughs> Another perspective. <laughs> well, that's what the schedule is. You can go as fast as you would like. I'm here for this training. This episode sold me on it, like 100%. It's, you know, tournament arc. You've seen anime. You know how it goes. You'll, you know, clash your techniques, but also your personalities. Look at this closet badass just fooling everyone with his nervousness. This guy's just a little bit too smug for me. It's <laughs> really... It's this whole thing. Enter my domain. It's the beach episode. Ghetto. Oh, is this Shigaraki? We've seen him in the intro, right? The League of Cursed Villains. Unfortunately. Halloween in Shibuya. Is he sort of the bridge between curses and humans? The curses have been really down on humanity. Maybe that's a, a distinguishing feature of, of his character. Juju Stroll! Oh no, it's the villains. Is this? Damn, what's the name of that episode? It's Ember Island. I know how this ends. They're heading to a, a house party later. They're gonna Juju stroll all the way to Chan's house. <laughs> As someone who really does not like this villain, this whole episode has just been a delight. <laughs> excellent, quite excellent. Well, 
that episode gets a 0 out of 10 for No Panda. No, actually, that was one of my, my favorites so far, I think. Just because I think the Gojo ability was so amazing. I feel like I still haven't fully understood it and what it means, what the sig significance of it is. But not only is it cool just as like an aesthetic thing and it's a great concept for an attack, it just expands his character in a way that's really interesting. It's really tough. I have to give credit to all these shows because you start with nothing, basically, and you got to develop so many things so quickly. Your only recourse in a lot of cases is to kind of put stand-ins for things that the audience immediately understands and do that well enough to get people to watch long enough that you can develop them into something special and unique and interesting. So in the beginning, Gojo for me was sort of like, all right, he's just the powerful one that they lean on, right? He's like the, the older, more powerful dude who's gonna guide them a little bit and they respect him because he's so great. And part of his charisma comes from being sort of aloof seeming. And to be fully honest, even tropes work sufficiently. You know, there are tropes for a reason. They're used because they work. So I already liked him to some degree, but I feel like this episode carved out kind of a novel space for him in my conceptualization of this show. He's not just that. There's a lot more to it. He is confident, but I'm starting to feel like there's a lot more than just that. It's not an empty shell. He obviously cares a lot about the kids. There's stuff he knows that we don't know yet, I'm assuming, that the kids don't know yet. And he, while being a symbol of peace and safety, also in a way is a symbol of the opposite because he's something special. He's something special in what is a horrifying world. So I'm really intrigued with this character and both terrified and excited to see where, where his arc will go. Plus training with him seems just amazing. And then you have the introduction of a new villain who I'm, I'm guessing is gonna be the actual dude, at least for a bit.